I'm Dr. Gavin Svensson. I'm the Curator of Invertebrate Zoology and the Director of Research and Collections here at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Back in 2013, we were on a, a museum expedition to Peru. And we've gone to Peru in the past, but this was a, a special expedition in the northern part. So we actually were right on the Amazon River. And we went to a research site that looked pretty promising based on the habitat there. We set up a very large light trap, which attracts insects, kind of like your porch light on, on a house uh, attracts insects. We waited a little bit, and there were a lot of other insects coming in. A lot of them were uh, beetles, wasps, flies, uh, other species of praying mantis. And then this tiny little thing came in that was bright orange with a little black head and a little black abdomen. And it ran around on the sheet, and it looked just like a little wasp. I knew it was slightly different. It didn't quite look right. It didn't look quite like a mantis. It didn't look quite like a, a wasp. I went up and I grabbed it and I put it in a little vial. And then once we started observing it, we knew we had something totally different. We assumed that that bright coloration was a mimicry of something because if you're defenseless and you're depending on mimicry and the vast majority of other praying mantises are mimicking tree bark or leaves or blending in to avoid detection, if you're conspicuously colored, you're advertising something. Not only does it have this black, orange, black coloration pattern that looks like all of these wasps, but behaviorally, it moves around like them. It rotates around fast. Its antennae are, are moving very rapidly, like a lot of uh, wasps will move their antennae. And it also does this ab abdominal pumping behavior, which is very characteristic of a wasp. So the mantis is really just cueing in on a signal already present in the environment as a visual defense to be left alone. When we got it back to the lab and actually did the research on it, we conducted internal dissections, and that confirms that we have an independent character set that, that really tells us that this thing is unique. And we directly compare it with hundreds of other individuals in the lineage to also confirm that it is unique. It actually matched quite well with an already described species. Now our species came from northern Peru, and this other one, which looked very, very similar, but it was not brightly colored, came from French Guiana. But when we did the internal dissections and all the measurements, and we looked at the other important characteristics that defined what our new species looked like, it had similar characteristics. They weren't similar enough to be the same species, but what it really told us that we have a new lineage. So I can tell you, Vespa mantoida, which is a name we got it, wasp mantis, because of this wasp mimicry, it really is telling you that these two species within that lineage are uniquely characteristic of this particular biology. Every time you find something new, it gives you the opportunity to reevaluate what's already known within a broader lineage. Most species discovery doesn't happen right in the field like that. You don't just see something and say, Eureka, that's a new species. You usually have to come back and you put it under a microscope, you do all the analyses, but in these rare moments when you're out in the field and you see something like that and you know exactly that it's different, it's really exciting.